Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to talk about sharpening and noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw. I say noise reduction reluctantly because I really want to talk about sharpening, but you can't talk about sharpening without talking about noise reduction because they work hand in hand. So what you're going to see is here is the overall before and here's the after. We're going to get a really nice, clean and natural noise reduction with a nice, clean, natural sharpening added to our images. The idea here is that the devils and the little angels here are in the details, okay? So let's go ahead and dive in here and I'll show you everything that you need to know about noise reduction and sharpening at the same time in Adobe Camera Roll. So I was recently out with my buddy Jim Walninski here in Kansas City shooting at the Nelson Atkins Museum and it's one of my favorite places to photograph and Jim, Jim loves architecture so it was a good time for me to kind of spread outside of my box and work on some architecture stuff. Well, one of the things that happened was we were outside, we didn't have our tripods with us because we were shooting inside the museum. So Obviously you can't take a tripod in there. So we're outside shooting the architecture at really high ISOs. So this image is at ISO 4000, uh, F 5.6, 1 13th of a second, 10 millimeters handheld. So I was able to get away with quite a bit with the A7R 3 here, but we still have noise. So this is really gonna focus on sharpening as it pertains to noise reduction at the same time. I recently got an email from someone saying, I use these sharpening parameters on every image. And I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool, but how do you know to use those exact ones on every image? You see, because sharpening isn't one of those things that you can just say, okay, I use this amount and this radius and this detail. It's dependent upon the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in here into this image really close into the detailed areas of the photograph and just show you before we do any noise reduction what ISO 4000 looks like at 1 13th of a second here at f5.6 with the 10 millimeter lens on the Sony a7R 3 quite a bit of noise but it's nothing that we can't work with this is at 200% if I zoom out to 100% you can see that we have a lot of pixelated grainy type of noise and it's not a bad noise and it's definitely a noise we can work with but I want to show you that noise reduction and sharpening work hand in hand. So as it stands right now, we already have sharpening happening on this image. By default, Adobe Camera Raw, when we hop over in here, is going to have this sharpening already set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to do this, is if you're going to be working with your noise reduction and sharpening at the same time, is to move all of your sharpening down to zero. Okay, all of it. None of that should be up anywhere. And now we're going to work on our noise reduction. Typically with noise reduction, I'm actually more concerned right now with sharpening than I am with noise reduction on this tutorial. But with noise reduction, I'm typically gonna move the luminance value up to about the 25 range. And the luminance detail, I usually keep at about 50. Now these are pretty standard for me, anywhere between 20 and 30. I don't go too much higher than that because if I do, the noise goes from being like digital pixels to being like this smoothed out, blurred out, really bad looking, it looks almost like a bad paint filter, okay? So I usually leave the luminance between 25 and 30 here, the luminance detailed about 50. The luminance contrast I leave pretty low because that's the contrast between the lights and darks in the actual noise. The color, I bring that up pretty high because color noise is typically the killer of your images. You see, there's the color noise uh, by default here if we bring this all the way down to zero. So bring our color noise up to somewhere above 50 and then bring the color detail down a little bit because this is the color noise detail. Color smoothness can be somewhere between here. So these are typical settings that I would use for noise reduction. But now, after we've reduced the noise, here's our before and here's our after. As we reduce that noise, we lose sharpening. We lose detail in our image when we reduce the noise because we're trying to blur those pixels, right? And blend them together. So now we need to sharpen them. Well, what you're gonna see up here in the sharpening detail, and this is a great image to work on for this because we've got a lot of detail that needs sharpening up here, a lot of detail that needs sharpening here, and these areas don't need that sharpening. So if I bring this amount up to where Adobe Camera Raw had it set at the beginning at like 21 or something like that, and I bring the radius up a little bit, and I bring that detail up a little bit, I think that's what it looked like up there. This is happening to everything. So here's the before, and here's the after. So what you're seeing here is sharpening on top of noise reduction. Well, we don't really want that to happen, right? So what we have here is this little masking slider. If you press Alt or Option and you click on here, you're going to see a white screen. That white screen basically means that this sharpening that's happening here is happening to everything because that screen is white. If I press Alt or Option and start to move it over, you see how things start to turn black? 
that's basically saying that this sharpening is not going to affect those areas that are turning black. So if we move this all the way over here, you can see that we have our noise reduction happening, but our sharpening is not happening on those areas. And how do I know that? Well, if I turn the before and after on, look before, our noise reduction is not kicked in and our sharpening is not kicked in. Here, our noise reduction is kicked in because this pillar is nice and smooth and our sharpening is kicked in because I can see some of that detail showing up in this area here. So once you get this dialed in to where you want that sharpening to take place, I would suggest something like that because we want some detail to be happening even in those shadow areas of this uh, door frame here. So for this image, it's about 68. I'm really only wanting white to show up on areas of detail though, areas that really need that sharpened detail edge. So now I have the liberty to move these amount radius and detail sliders wherever I want to go. So I can bring the amount way up. Now you'll notice that it's not working on this pole right here. We're getting some really bad artifacting happening through here because we're taking it too far. But you can see that the masking is working. It's not transitioning into these pillars, is it? It's only happening on areas that are white. So if I bring this down, get that amount to a good amount right about there. We don't have to focus too much on that amount either because we have the radius or the amount of pixels around the uh, subject pixel area that is getting the sharpening. So you don't have to move the amount way up. You can keep the amount pretty low at about 20 and use the radius or how much of the pixels around each pixel do you want to get sharpened. And then the detail, which is the contrast between those pixels in that radius area and the amount working all together. So if you bring the detail up, you can get a lot more detail out in that without over sharpening. So don't think that you just have to slam this amount up. The amount can stay pretty low between 19 and 20 and use the radius and the detail sliders to get the detail back in the areas that need it. So if we move up here to this area, we can move this amount up just a little bit more to get some more detail out of that. That looks good. And everything looks still pretty darn good because we have a really nice noise reduction and we have a really nice sharpening. So here is that overall before. And you see here, what we've done is we've reduced the noise because we've reduced a lot of the noise on this pillar here. And we've maintained this amount of detail that we see in this door through the sharpening. So if we were to go ahead and turn this back on to see what we've done afterwards, you can see that we still have quite a bit of detail in those areas that need detail, but we still have our noise reduced. If I bring this amount down to zero, you can see that we don't have any of that sharpening taking place now. So I'll bump that back up and you can see that sharpening taking effect. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see this. I'll drop this way down and I'll bring it back up. Look at that detail there. That detail looks much, much better. I'll drop this back down and I'll move this back up. See that? We have detail and we also have our noise reduced in this image. So you don't need to fear going to ISO 4000 on your camera. At this rate, looking at this, I probably could have gone to ISO probably 6400 and still been very safe with these adjustments that I was going to make later in Adobe Camera Raw. So what I want you to take away from this is that noise reduction is important and so is sharpening. But making sure that, that sharpening is happening in the exact spot that you want it to happen is ideal. The reason why we turned off sharpening first all the way down to zero was so that we could see what noise reduction we wanted on our image. Then we went from the noise reduction back up into our sharpening to sharpen up those areas. It's very difficult to see your noise reduction happening if you're doing sharpening at the same time, right? That's why we drop that amount of, this, of the sharpening all the way down before we go into noise reduction. Nail in that noise reduction, pop right back up into sharpening and get everything dialed in. But first, you get that mask right first. You get that mask right, and then once that mask is set and you see the detail areas that you want to be getting that sharpening, then you can go ahead and work on the amount, the radius, and the detail. Remember, the amount is how much sharpening that area is going to be getting or how potent that sharpening is gonna be. The radius is how many pixels around each pixel that are being sharpened are going to get the sharpening happening to it. And then the detail is the amount of micro contrast, really small contrast that's between each one of those pixels and how those details go from light to dark. Again, my name is Blake Rudis, and thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend, because this kind of knowledge needs to get out to those individuals who say, I just use the same parameters for everything. It doesn't work that way. All right, thanks for taking the time to pursue your creative endeavors and your passions through these tutorials.